Welcome to Eastland English. Come take a trip to Newfoundland with us. This is our first morning at the cabin in Newfoundland, Canada. There are fewer icebergs today. The ice has dissipated from the bay. The weather here is pretty chilly. When I first woke up this morning, the temperature was minus one. It was really, really chilly. Luckily, our cabin is winterized, so we don't feel the cold so drastically. You notice today the sky is quite clear and blue, partly cloudy. And it's not snowing like yesterday. This is Judy reporting for Eastland English. For the first time on our trip, we had only a five minute drive to our destination, the Viking settlement at Lance O Meadows National Historic Site. Here we are at the northernmost tip of Newfoundland at a national park, and there are charging stations for electric cars. Cool. We also saw another of the ubiquitous signs warning about the possibility of encountering a moose on the road. Just for your information, we arrived at Lanceau Meadows archaeological site. It's the old Viking settlement. And like most other things in May, it's closed. But at the visitor center, we met a friendly gentleman who said that while we couldn't access the site from the visitor center, there's an easier way to go because there's construction on the paths this way and we won't be able to get through. He's directed us to the handicapped access, which is just down the road about two or 300 meters beyond the general access. And then we'll be able to access the handicapped boardwalk. That's where we're going. Lucky us. Yes, right. <laughs> the good thing we met him. They say that in Newfoundland, people are extremely friendly. And he was. <laughs> he was. He was full of joy to meet us and happy to give us the information that we needed. Oh, there's snow on the ground. Cross the snowfield <laughs> obstacles. <laughs> like I told you earlier, don't give up easily. Try your best. And look at this. We found the new way to reach our target. This pathway looks significantly easier than the one we tried at first. This is called a boardwalk. Quite literally, it's a walk with boards on it. That's where they get the name Boardwalk. Take a boardwalk with us. Beauty, your cheeks look really rosy. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Then I don't have to do makeup anymore. No, all we need is zero degree weather and a brisk breeze like we have. And you can have fresh looking makeup every day. All of this site is accessible to those confined to wheelchairs. It's not often that the discovery of a single site can rewrite history. In this case, at this site in Lanceau Meadows in the northern tip of Newfoundland, just such a thing has occurred. When I was in school, we were always taught that the first European explorer to discover the Americas was Christopher Columbus, who sailed across the ocean in 1492. Here at this site, they've discovered the remains of a Viking settlement from over 1,000 years ago. That predates Christopher Columbus by about 500 years. The archaeological dig that followed and the carbon dating of the artifacts has dated this settlement to about 1,000 
AD. This is where European settlers first made contact with North America. This site is a recreation of the settlement. The Vikings arrived here in Newfoundland by boat. The kind of boat that they took is called a longship. However, looking out across the ocean, I don't think they could make it in May, and certainly not before May. So they likely arrived in the summer or fall because the spring has these icebergs or this ice pack in the bay. There's no way they could make it by boat. Just a short walk away from the recreated site lay the actual site of the archaeological dig. It has since been reburied to protect the foundations of the actual buildings. Notice the mounds of earth. Here is the actual site of the main dwelling, the ship repair, and the iron forging hut. And it appears that the actual dwellings add up to a much, much larger space than the recreated place. This settlement was even more spread out than the recreated one. Here is where they found a dwelling and woodworking place. And here is the site of a workshop. Atelier is French for workshop. And workshop. Another dwelling and small forge were found here. Because this video was shot in early May, you can see that the grass has not yet turned green. However, there were splashes of color to be seen in the evergreen bushes. And the settlement has been recreated by archaeological experts to match what it must have been like for Vikings to live here. So many interesting things were found. These Vikings had technology that was far beyond what we thought they were capable of. They forged iron at this site. They made iron tools here a thousand years ago. According to this discovery, Anthropologists, who are those who study ancient cultures, and archaeologists, who are scientists who study the remains of ancient cultures, this is likely the first meeting between two branches of the human family. Most scientists agree that the cradle of humanity, or the birthplace of humanity, was Africa. Two branches of humanity split. Some went to Asia, and some went north to Europe. Those two branches of the family tree were separated for many, many thousands of years. When did they meet again? Likely here, when the first European Vikings came and met the native North Americans. Therefore, it seems that this place here was the place where humanity finally reunited after splitting up hundreds of thousands of years ago, right here at Lasso Meadows Viking Settlement. Just imagine, what must it have been like for Vikings to live in a settlement like this? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Let's take a closer look. These types of buildings are known as sod or turf houses and they were recreated to match the exact building techniques used by the Vikings a thousand years ago. All of the structures have wooden frames inside of them and are covered by densely packed chunks of sod. This kind of design helps insulate against the bitter cold that the Vikings experienced at this site during the winter. Let's take a peek inside. Archaeologists 
surmise that the actual site was most likely not a permanent settlement, but was used to repair their boats during the winter months. Wow. We're walking through the main building here called a longhouse. It's a community house. This is where the family would get together and eat or tell stories. This magnificent site was discovered in 1960 by Helge and Anne Ingstad and named a National Historic Site by Canada in 1968. Ten years later, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The reconstructed buildings were erected to help visitors understand what living here must have been like for the Vikings. That's beautiful. That's such cool light. I think they came right at the right time. Longhouses like this would have been occupied by several families. There are different rooms along its length, allowing for both privacy and community activities. There's also a workshop where wooden tools were made. Oh, tools! There's some tools and such here. All of the iron parts to these tools were created in the furnace hut, or forge, which was in a separate building as we will soon see. Look at the size of these buckets. Judging by the size of these buckets, the Vikings were likely powerful people. This alone is quite heavy. Imagine if it were filled with something. It would take a lot of strength to carry something like that. And here we see examples of what's likely a butter churn. Behind here is where they make butter from milk. These recreated barrels were made from wood and iron that was forged at this site. What do you think they were used for? If you have an idea, please tell us in the comments section. For perhaps thousands of years, dwellings or houses made by humans had to have fire inside. That fire creates smoke, and the smoke has to exit the house. How does it do it? Through these chimneys. Chimneys are tubes that suck the smoke from the fire out of the house. Nowadays, most houses in cold climates are heated by natural gas or electricity, but some of them still use firewood stoves or fireplaces to heat their houses. As you can see, each one of these buildings has at least one chimney, and the main building has four chimneys. Based on your experience in the past, which one do you prefer to live in? The house with a chimney or without a chimney? Interesting that you ask, Yudi, because the very first house that we moved into in Canada had a fireplace with a chimney, and the fires that we had were wonderful social occasions. We'd build a fire and sit around the fireplace as a family and have talks and play games, and the warmth of the fire matched the warmth of the community that we experienced by sitting around the fire together. Nowadays, with electric heating, we don't have that same kind of communal experience of sharing the fire. Thank you for the answer. Spectacular. Indeed. Wow, it went inside. Oh my gosh. Pretty big inside, right? I know. Interestingly, this structure has inside of it a wicker basket-like interior, right. probably to keep the sod up. And the outside is a different material. That sod, that's called sod or oh, okay. peat moss. Wow, but there's no windows, nothing at all. No windows. Next, as promised earlier, we visited the little separate furnace hut, or forge. Like the longhouse, this was also reconstructed. 
Although you can't quite see everything due to the snow packed into this building, this hut is a recreation of the furnace hut used by the Vikings. A furnace is a place where you can forge iron or forge metals. Forging is the act of heating metals until they are either liquid, which we call molten, or pliable, which means flexible enough to shape into tools. This doesn't look very hot to me now. <laughs> to be continued.